Oh, it's my shower show. It's my shower show. Welcome to my shower show. And I'm here to share it with you. Today, we're going to do a call out. And we're going to do a telephone interview with the illustrious Rebecca Moberly. Hey, Rebecca? What's going on? I think you're on the Adam Farrington Shower Show. Oh, wow. I'm speechless almost. Thanks for having me on your show. I have been keeping up with all of your episodes and enjoying all of the artists and that you've been featuring. And I think it's the show that's going hard. Wow, thanks a lot for your kind words. You are welcome. You're the first person that I've had on the show in this call-out format. This is all new, being on a call-in show. Well, it's a call-out show. I called you. Yeah, well, okay. Call-out show. Yeah, you did. You called out to me. What do we discuss here? Hey, I'm just winging it, you know what I mean? I'm just going to make myself look smart through editing, and I'll do the okay. same for you, so uh, okay. we don't have to sweat it. Because you can edit anything that sounds awkward. I have a real heavy Kentucky accent. No, we like the Kentucky heavy accent. This is a cultural show. We uh, embrace cultural differences. Well, yeah, and that's, that's what I like about this show so much, is the... Embracing of cultural differences and um, it's it's just um it's refreshing. So uh, let's see. For our viewers who don't know, you are the mother of Gina Phillips, the local New Orleans artist. You are an artist in your own right because the acorn does not fall far from the tree, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Especially uh, with this motherly breed, there's there's an art chain that runs in the family. So the acorn fell off the tree and it rolled down Marberly Hill and it ended up in New Orleans, right? That's right. Where Gina grew up, and we're from Kentucky, and where I grew up, on the hill, everyone seemed to be artistically talented. And even when we were little children, my five brothers and I and my sister, my older sister, and we we just thought everyone had the talent. You know, we could draw, making art sculptures. We just thought that everyone does that. Later, we thought, wait, other kids weren't doing those things. It took us years and years to realize that was special. And would you uh, attribute that to your uh, your upbringing, the encouragement from your family? It seemed to mostly uh, we inherited it from my mother. She was just, she was an amazing lady talented artist that just, uh, she had never had any training. She was self-taught. Uh, but uh, so uh, all of those years when she wasn't busy tending to raising seven children, uh, she was very creative. And she was the biggest influence on all of the grandchildren, on Gina, and on my other daughter, September, she was their wonderful example. Yeah, so as you know, you know, I have my shower stall, and, uh, you know, it's unadorned for the most part. The walls of my shower are not uh, utilized to their potential, so I've decided to open a gallery in my shower stall. I'm giving you a show. Well, of course, I can't see them. Just tell me which one you're looking at first, and we will discuss each one if you'd like to do that. Okay, well, let me grab a glass of wine, and uh, I'll make my way around the gallery. Well, where's my wine? That's so rude. <laughs> I've got a glass of wine in my hand. The first painting that we're stopping to look at, it's called Waiting for September. I'm actually looking at the original painting of self-portrait when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, September, and that the girl standing behind me was Gina. And because as a child, she never wore dresses. She hated dresses. I put a dress on her. And at that time, she had a white cat. And I put the white cat in. We were waiting for September. And there's almost a sculptural element here, right? Because I'm looking at well, the dress, and the dress is made out of cloth, and it has wrinkles, and it leaps off the page, right? Yes, the dress is actually made from a maternity top I wore when I was pregnant with September. All right, let's take a couple of steps further down the shower gallery, and let's okay. take a look at this piece. This is called Vincent, Rebecca, Mary, Roses, and Tears. Somehow, I wanted to express my admiration of 
the artist Benson Van Gogh and his lifetime of wonderful art, his, uh, and then because he always was sad and he could feel the sadness in his paintings or the joy or and the happiness. Uh, I included myself as a child in, in the painting with uh, blended in with him which were pretty egotistical of me. But I always have had depression all of my life. So somehow that was the symbolism of the tears. And then the roses, there's, I have quite a few rose stories of incidents that have happened throughout the years. All right, well, let's move on to the next picture. Miss Rebecca Crawford from First Street. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a pretty long story to explain all about Mr. Rebecca Crawford. In 1972, that's a long time ago, <laughs> I was looking in the phone book for someone's name, the Crawford, and uh, I came across a name, Miss Rebecca Crawford, her address, 315 First Street. All of a sudden, these hair stood up on me, my arms, and I became real, it was like kind of a deja vu feeling. So I thought, wow, that was a weird reaction. Then years later, working at a florist shop in downtown Richmond in the early 80s, and on Friday evenings, I would stop at Kroger's, and I would always see this little lady, a little African-American lady. Um, she had her hair, uh, her hair was in a bun and kind of had a braid, and she was very small with the teeth, and I, I noticed her, and I thought, wow, oh, she's, She's so amazing. Then, in 2000, my daughter, September, and I moved to a house, 315 First Street, and the house that was torn down to make way for this house been built after the Civil War by Miss Rebecca Crawford's grandfather, who fought the Civil War. She grew up here on this property, and her spirit is still here. You're talking about Miss Rebecca Crawford. She lived in on the same property that you live in now. She lived on this very same property. My backyard is full of artifacts from her life. This is the part that gives me cold chills. Is when I mentioned to one of the neighbors for information, asked for information about this Miss Rebecca Crawford, and one of the ladies uh, said, yes, I have an old picture of the family. And when she handed it to me, I nearly fell over. That was the woman I used to see at Kroger. Do you used to see Miss Rebecca Crawford at Kroger's? Yes, yes. Wait, there was a little girl you saw at Kroger's all the time? No, she was an older, much older woman then. But Very you could recognize her. But the features were the same, and she... Even though she was an older woman back then, in the early 80s, she's deceased now. And she was just grown up by the time you saw her at Kroger's, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> so how old do you think that she was when you used to see her at Kroger's? She was probably in her 60s or 70s. She lived a pretty long life. She never married. She lived here. She. Um, so what, what was it that stood out about her that, like, back in the 80s that you noticed this woman in Kroger? There was uh, an electricity that drew me to her, this, uh, this energy that spoke to me about her. And then many years later, when I first saw an actual photograph of the Miss Rebecca Crawford who lived here, I was shocked because it was the, uh, the same woman only as a child because her features were unmistakable. I am an artist and I noticed features. I had a connection to Miss Rebecca Crawford and I lived in the same lot, on the same lot where she lived her life. And I have felt her spirit. I have felt her spirit. I have felt her energy since I've lived here at different times, especially at Christmas, at times when I'm out of my backyard. And it, it really is wonderful. 